We're now going to start our first example of a proof using induction. There's some things about this problem that will help us identify that this technique is a little more general than it may seem from what we wrote down before. For a proof by induction, like I said before, that proof outline said we needed to prove two things, the base case and the inductive step. So the base case is whatever the smallest value required for the statement is. In this case, my P of N is that two to the N is less than N factorial. And that's supposed to be true for N greater than or equal to four. So for the base case, we must show that P of N is true for four, so P of four is true. In this case, that means we must show that two to the four, which is less than four factorial. Hopefully you remember the factorial function. The factorial function says multiply the numbers starting with the thing inside of the factorial down to one. So four factorial is four times three times two times one. That's 24. The left-hand side is 16, and it is the case that 16 is less than 24. So, P of 4 holds. That's all we need to do for the first step. Plug in a number. This should usually be very easy. There are some cases where this turns out to be very hard. Usually they involve things like puzzles, where you're trying to argue about a particular puzzle strategy. For us, for the most part, what we're going to deal with, this should be a very easy thing to hold true. So that's step number one. Step number two is to make our inductive assumption. Inductive assumption. Which is, we are going to assume that P of N is true. Sometimes it can be useful to use a different letter here. So I'm going to say, assume that P of K is true. We must show that P of K plus one is true. This is the idea that we must show that P of K implies P of K plus one in our notation. Just like we did before when we were doing our other proofs, we assumed that the hypothesis was true and then needed to do logically consistent steps to show that the con the conclusion was true in, in fact. So we know for certain that two to the K is less than K factorial. We need to show need to show that 2 to the k plus 1 is less than k plus 1 factorial. So that is our goal. The way we typically do this is you either start with your inductive assumption and then do some algebra from there, or you start with one of the sides of the equation, or inequality in this case, and then work from there. In this case, I'm going to start with two to the K plus one and then do some algebra and see what happens. So notice two to the K plus one is equal to two to the K times two. And I know something about two to the K because of my inductive assumption, I know two to the K is less than K factorial. Therefore, I can replace that 2 to the k with k factorial. So, by inductive assumption, by inductive assumption, I know that I can make 2 to the k times 2 less than k factorial times 2. And now we need to try to make that look like k plus one factorial. 
So it'd be really convenient if I could get rid of that too somehow and make it more convenient. What I want to do is I would really like to replace two with K plus one. Because if I replace it with K plus one, I can actually rearrange that into K plus one factorial, it turns out. So is that true? Well, this requires that K is greater than one. If I just do algebra, right, that's 2 less than k plus 1. I subtract 1 from both sides. That says k needs to be greater than 1. Is that the case? Yes. According to the statement of the problem, every value I'm plugging in is at least 4. Therefore, this is definitely the case. So let's write that down. Since k greater than or equal to 4, k plus 1 is definitely greater than 2 because of that reasoning. Therefore, I can replace that 2 with k plus 1. So, this is less than k factorial times k plus 1. And now, the one way to write down factorials is to write them as the number inside of the factorial times 1 less. I'll write that down. k plus 1 factorial is, by definition, k plus 1 times k factorial. It's defined recursively. If you've taken a class in programming, this is likely something that you use at your very first introduction to recursion. So I can rewrite that right-hand side as exactly k plus 1 factorial. Therefore, starting with 2, k, 2 to the k plus 1, I used my inductive assumption, and I used the fact that the value of k was at least so large to show that it was less than k plus 1 factorial. Therefore, using p of k, I showed that that implied p of k plus 1. Therefore, p of k implies p of k plus 1. So, the conclusion must be true. I showed that the base case was true, and I showed that that inductive step, the for all n, p of n implies p of n plus 1, was true. Therefore, the result must hold. So I'm just going to write that as the result holds by the principle of mathematical induction. Mathematical, mathematical induction. Like I said, there was two parts to this proof. The first part is the base case, usually easy. And the second part was to, usually we state our inductive assumption to make sure that we understand what it is and what we're trying to prove, which I did there in red and blue to make sure that they stick out. And then we try to show that the inductive assumption for p of k implies p of k plus 1. So we start with the some part of p of k plus 1 and then munge it around with a bunch of algebra. There's obviously much, many more... Nailed it. There's obviously many types of problems for this that wouldn't involve algebra or more sophisticated and involve things that don't even necessarily resemble mathematical statements that you can move around expressions in. However, for now, we're going to deal with a lot of algebra, and this is a typical approach for these sort of algebraic expressions.